Are you drowning in a sea of disorganized files? Well, you're not alone. According to different studies, most of us waste hours every week hunting for information and documents buried in a chaotic mess of folders. Since I've spent the last 10 years perfecting a system to organize my digital space and have helped millions of people with my tutorials here on YouTube to organize theirs. But what if I told you there's a simple way to end the chaos for good? In this video, I'm going to show you the best way to organize your files and folders, a method that's so intuitive that you'll wonder how you ever managed without it. Let's dive in and reclaim your digital space. Before diving into the best way to organize your files and folders, let's briefly talk about what makes an ideal file organization structure. Why does it even matter? Why can't we just throw everything into one folder and call it a day? Well, here's the thing. Your file organization system is like the backbone of your digital life. If it's weak or poorly structured, everything else starts to fall apart. So what should an ideal organization structure have? First up, simplicity. Your system needs to be easy to understand, not just for you, but for anyone who might need to access it. If you're spending more time organizing or explaining than actually working, it's too complicated. Next, clarity is key. Every folder and file should have a clear descriptive name. You want to know exactly what's inside without having to dig through everything. This clarity will save you tons of time when you're in a rush. Flexibility is another big one. Your structure should be able to grow and adapt as your needs change. Whether you're adding new projects, clients, or personal finds, your system should handle it all without becoming a mess. And finally, scalability. As you add more files over time, your structure should scale with you, not against you. You don't want to hit a point where your system can't keep it up, forcing you to start all over again. In short, the best file organization system is simple, clear, flexible, and scalable. It's something that you can maintain without much effort and it grows with you. Now let's dive into the sorted alphabetical structure, which ticks all these boxes and more. You might wonder what the sorted alphabetical structure is. This structure might not be completely new, but it's one of the six structures I developed, put a name on it and further optimize it for everyone's use. I believe this method is a game changer and it's surprisingly easy to set up. The idea is to create a system that's not only organized, but also intuitive to use, so you can find what you need in seconds. Now you might wonder why this structure is called sorted alphabetical structure. Well, first of all, because I did not come up with a shorter, but similar descriptive name. Let me know in the comments if you can think of something better. So the name basically reflects the structure itself, where everything is arranged in alphabetical order. And the sorted part emphasizes that this method involves systematically organizing items according to the alphabet, making it easy to locate and retrieve files quickly. Now that you know that, let's look at how an exemplary sorted alphabetical structure can be set up. First, you'll want to start by creating your main folders. These are your broad categories that represent the key areas of your life or work. Think of them as the big buckets where everything else will go. For your personal files, you might create main folders like finances, health, family, hobbies, or travel. These categories should cover the major areas of your personal life, helping you keep everything organized and easy to find. In your professional life, you might set up main folders like clients, projects, reports, meetings, and training. These broad categories will help you manage different aspects of your work, ensuring that everything is in its place. The key here is to keep the number of main folders manageable. Aim for around five to maximum 10, ideally not more than eight. Once you've got your main folders set up, it's time to create subfolders within each one. This is where you start to get more specific. Under your finances folder, you could have subfolders for bank statements, bills, and taxes. This helps you break down your financial documents into more manageable junks, so you're not digging through everything when you need something specific. In your projects folder at work, you might create subfolders like project A, project B, and project C. 
Within each project folder, you could further organize by having subfolders for proposals, contracts, and deliverables. This ensures that each project is neatly organized and easy to navigate. Just like with your main folders, you want to keep the number of subfolders under control. Aim for around three to five subfolders per main folder. This way you keep everything organized without creating too many layers to navigate. Now here's the part that makes everything so much easier, sorted alphabetically. By arranging both your main folders and subfolders in alphabetical order, you're creating a system that's logical and easy to navigate. When you're looking for something, you won't have to guess where it is. You'll know exactly where to find it. And finally, let's talk about labeling your files. This is where clarity comes into play. Every file should have a clear, descriptive name that tells you exactly what it is. For personal documents, instead of naming files document one, use something descriptive like 2024 tax return or January 2024 utility bill. This makes it easy to understand what the file contains at a glance. At work, instead of using vague names like final version, label your files clearly, such as client A proposal March 2024 or project B meeting notes January 15th, 2024. Including dates in your file names can be especially helpful for sorting and finding documents later on. So there you have it, the sorted alphabetical structure in a nutshell. But having implemented the system is just half the deal. Maybe even more importantly is how to properly maintain the system in your daily workload. But before we're covering this major aspect, let me ask if you've enjoyed the video so far. If yes, I'm confident you'll also love The Digital Architect, a comprehensive guide I've personally written packing all my knowledge and experience into your ultimate toolkit for digital efficiency. This isn't about just organizing files. It's a complete overhaul of how you manage your digital life. From streamlined file management to best practices for handling your emails, calendar, and your notes, this guide provides actionable tips that can transform your approach to digital organization. So if digital clutter has been holding you back, this guide is your solution. Dive into the digital architect and start reclaiming your time, energy, and headspace today. Click the link in the description below to learn more and boost your productivity. Now that you've got your structure all set up, let's talk about how to keep it running smoothly over time. A good system is only as effective as your ability to maintain it. So here are some practical tips to help you stay organized in the long run. First up, regular maintenance is key. I've learned this the hard way. There was a time when I let my folders get out of hand, thinking I'd organize everything later. You might know this too well, when there are busy days and you just dump everything on your desktop and think you will get to file everything when the storm has calmed. Spoiler, this never happened and the later never came. So I ended up spending hours trying to find documents that should have taken seconds to locate. Now I spend a few minutes each week tidying up my files. I move any old documents I no longer need into an archive folder and delete anything that's not relevant anymore. This simple habit keeps my active folders lean and easy to navigate, saving me tons of time in the long run. Next, consider using an inbox folder for temporary storage. I found this incredibly helpful, especially when I'm in the middle of a project and don't have time to organize files right away. I keep an inbox folder on my desktop where I temporarily store downloads, scan documents, or anything else that needs sorting later. Once a week, I go through this folder and move everything into their appropriate locations. It's a great way to keep my main folders from getting cluttered while ensuring everything eventually ends up where it belongs. Another crucial tip is to back up your files regularly. Even the best organized system is vulnerable if you don't have a reliable backup strategy in place. Consider using an external hard drive or a cloud storage service like Google Drive, OneDrive, or Dropbox. Set up automatic backups so you don't have to worry about losing important documents, photos, or files. I use both cloud storage and an external drive to back up my files. Finally, staying disciplined is essential. It's easy to let things slide when you're busy, but consistency is what keeps your system effective. Make it a point to organize any new files immediately in case you are not using an inbox folder rather than letting them pile up. 
This way your system stays neat and you avoid the need for a massive cleanup down the road. By following these tips, you'll keep your sorted alphabetical structure in top shape, ensuring that you always know where to find what you need. If you liked the video so far, also make sure to subscribe to my newsletter and grab your free copy of the Essential Guide to 3x Productivity. Let's be honest. Are you tired of feeling buried by your to-do list, constantly running out of time and never making real progress? If you're exhausted by the daily grind, wasting time and stressing out without seeing the expected results, then you need this guide. It's packed with proven strategies that actually work to triple your productivity by mastering three key areas. Building solid structures that keep your day organized and focused creating simple systems that make managing your time, tasks and priorities effortless, and supercharging your workflow with Microsoft 365 tips that save you hours. So if you're ready to reclaim your time, reduce your mental load and get more done every day, don't wait. Sign up for my newsletter via the link in the description, grab the free guide and start making real lasting progress today. But let's face it, even with the best organization system in place, we all run into some challenges from time to time. Whether it's managing a growing number of files or dealing with unexpected chaos, things don't always go as planned. But don't worry, I've been there. And I've got some solutions to help you overcome some of the most common hurdles in file management. One of the biggest challenges I've faced is dealing with an ever-growing number of files. As time goes on, you'll naturally accumulate more documents, photos, or other files. And if you're not careful, your neat organized system can start to feel overwhelming. What I found helpful is periodically reviewing your main folders and considering whether you need to create additional subfolders to keep things manageable. For instance, if you notice that your finances folder is getting too crowded, break it down further, maybe into subfolders by year or by specific topics. The key is to keep the system flexible enough to grow with your needs without letting it become cluttered. As I mentioned earlier, staying disciplined is super important, but can be tough, especially when life gets busy. I know how easy it is to fall into the trap of just saving files to the desktop or dumping everything into one folder to sort out later. But I've learned that this habit can quickly lead to chaos. One trick that's helped me is setting small, regular goals. Instead of letting files pile up, I make it a point to organize my files at the end of each day or at the end of the week. It might only take a few minutes, but this small effort makes a huge difference in maintaining a clean and organized digital space. And sometimes life throws you a curveball, like a sudden project with tons of documents coming all at once or an unexpected change in how you need to organize things. I've definitely experienced moments where my system was put to the test. In these cases, I've learned the importance of flexibility. If you find that your current system isn't working for a particular situation, don't be afraid to adapt it. Maybe you need to temporarily create a temporary folder to manage the influx of files or adjust your folder structure to accommodate a new type of work or project. The goal is to stay organized, even if it means bending the rules of your organizational system. But the great thing about the sorted alphabetical structure is that if you add new folders over time or rename them, your structure will remain sorted. Even with a good system in place, there are times when you just need something quickly and you're not exactly sure where it is. We've all been there, scrambling to locate a file before a meeting or deadline. In these moments, I rely heavily on the search functionality built into my computer. But to make the search effective, it's important that your files are named clearly and consistently as we discussed earlier. A good naming convention will make it much easier to locate what you need in a hurry, even if you're not sure in which folder it is. Now that you've got a solid system in place for organizing your files and folders, let's take it one step further. Watch this video next, where I'll walk you through the best practices for organizing your entire computer. Trust me, it's easier than you think and the payoff in productivity and satisfaction is huge.